Hello, uh, so this, my name is Daryl Worthy and I'm doing a series on uh, an introduction to R for analyzing uh, cognitive psychology experiments. So I'm a professor of cognitive psychology at Texas A&M uh, University. Uh, and so today I'm going to do a basic video. This was kind of a hurdle for me when I was initially uh, starting to learn R is how on earth do you get data actually into R? So how do I get it from, say, like a spreadsheet or something like that uh, into R so I can then work on it uh, through R? So a lot of the examples I remember uh, when I was first learning R, they all were like online uh, data sets like the MT cars uh, data sets. I think that's just a built-in uh, one. So if you uh, look for MT cars... Uh, you can see that it's like one that's already built in, basically. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show how to do that using the data from this uh, paper I published a couple years ago uh, with Kaylee Byrne, a former student of mine, uh, Aston Cornwall is another student, and then some of Kaylee's uh, students uh, at Clemson University. Okay, and so this was called Acute Stress Enhances Toler Tolerance of Uncertainty During Decision Making. And so if you go to my website, worthylab.org, you can click on uh, the PDF and it'll show you, uh, you know, the, the basic, um, you know, the paper. Uh, and you can also click on the data to look at the actual data. So in this paper, we had a stress and control condition, and we found that the stress condition actually performed better in this task because they uh, selected a high uncertainty option that had very variable rewards more often than the control condition that didn't get a stress manipulation. So if you click on that data, it takes you to our OSF page, and so you might have, say, data you've seen on uh, published on OSF that maybe you want to download and kind of reanalyze yourself. And so if you go to our folder um, here, uh, this RL and multi-level modeling code, if you expand it, uh, this has all of the code, the R scripts, and then also the data that we use for the analyses, the final analyses uh, that were presented in that paper. And so uh, to get this onto your computer, you can uh, download uh, the data sets. Okay, and so if you click on uh, the folder and click download a zip, it'll start uh, downloading. As you can see, I already did that basically uh, when I was uh, testing this beforehand. And so what I've what now we have this in a zip file. But what I like to do with all of my R uh, experiments or my R code is I keep everything in a folder called R code. And then there's a bunch of individual um, projects that uh, have you know, code in them specifically for those projects. And so I've created a new folder for this uh, series of videos I want to do called R example videos. Uh, these videos are designed to help, say, students in my lab that are just starting to, you know, participate in research with us or, you know, any other student, graduate student or undergraduate student, uh, or even, you know, a professor wanting to learn more uh, about R. So I've created this blank folder here, and now I'm going to uh, unzip these files I've downloaded from the OSF. Uh, I've highlighted them, and then I'm going to click Extract. And then it'll, by default, when I extract them into my downloads folder, I'm going to extract them into that folder I created. So this R code um, folder right there. And then I'm going to go find the R example videos folder, R hyphen example videos. <clears throat> and so I will ex uh, extract for that uh, to that folder. And now we can see them uh, in this folder. So this SU combined data, data from R uh, is what we'll be using most of the time. It has the data from both experiments. Um, and so that's what uh, it uses. Um, and so, uh, but I might, I think there are a couple other, these other files that might be used at different points. But anyhow, uh, you can open up that .csv file and so the first row in the C in any CSV file is a header file, header row, and then uh, you have the data. Now these data are concatenated. There's a hundred trials per participant, 
And so, uh, you know, after 100 trials, the participant number changes. So we have this now opened up in Excel, but the question concerning this video is how do we get that into R? So if you're just starting R, you might be like, okay, I've seen, you know, these examples, but how do you start just by getting some of my data in there so then I can do, you know, analyses or whatever uh, in R on those data? So I'm going to go ahead and close that. I don't need to save it. And I'm going to open up this behavioral analysis stress uncertainty script. So this runs uh, kind of the, the basic anal behavioral analyses first. Uh, I have these other uh, files for fitting mathematical models to the data and then doing mixed effects models as well. But we're going to start with this uh, for this video. And so up here at the top, uh, what I do is I try to set the working directory to be whatever folder I have my files in. And so you'll have to make this change since uh, I, I was working under a different folder uh, when I was doing these original analyses. You'll have to make these changes uh, if you download the script from our Open Science Framework page for this study. So uh, I'm on an E drive. Uh, R code is the name of the folder, so that can stay. And then I titled that folder R example videos. So spelling and capitalization is important uh, for R. So I press Control Enter to run that. And so now uh, it's set the working directory. Now I didn't have this in the original file, but if you type get uh, WD, get working directory, and then open parentheses, press Control Enter. And now uh, I can see down here in the console that I have uh, the example videos folder as my working directory. Uh, now these are, um, this isn't really important for just this video, but we'll be using these packages later. So if you don't have these, go ahead and install them by uh, typing install.packages uh, and then tidyverse, LME4, and brms. So we won't really be using uh, LME4 BMRS till in later videos. Uh, and we won't use tidyverse in this video since we're just opening data in this video. Okay, so now I have my working directory open. I have it open to this folder where all of my files are. Now I can actually uh, load this SU combined data from our file. And so here I've written the full path. You can do that. You uh, could do it if you wanted to change it to the directory it's in. So you need to make the same change you made up here. But since you're in the working directory, uh, you can basically just put in the file name and quotes and then .csv because it's a, that file type. And so then you'll have uh, a data frame uh, that's called data1. Okay, and so that's just an arbitrary name I, I made for it. And so we can use this uh, head function that I used at the beginning to look up um, MT cars, that data set. Uh, we can use that in our own data now. And so now we have our data into R. Uh, and so, you know, the mystery has been solved. This is how we actually get started and get data into R. And so um, I'll briefly talk about these column names, file name, just an arbitrary uh, name that we gave uh, to participant, subject number, uh, also arbitrary condition. Uh, we've written zero for st the stress condition, one for the control condition. So this was a stress condition participant uh, that was subject one. This is response time. Uh, response, one for the high variance option, which is the optimal choice. Two for the low variance option, uh, which isn't quite as good. Uh, the points they got, uh, so here are the, the points they got uh, for those individual trials. Points other is completely meaningless. It's kind of left over from an older uh, experiment. The trial, uh, there are 100 trials. D response is one if they pick from the optimal high variance option, zero if they pick from the other option. And then centered trial, uh, that I think we'll use later. These, uh, these three variables uh, don't mean anything, and so I'm not exactly sure why they're even there, but we can ignore them. So um, <clears throat> number of trials, uh, we'll get to that in the, the next video, but uh, if we click View uh, Data 1, now it lets us uh, view our data. And so we can, uh, just like in Excel, we can basically scroll down the whole, uh, the whole page. Uh, in this particular study, which is something we'll get to, uh, the subject numbers after 200 or for study two, 
uh, before 200, that was study one. So anyhow, we have all the data in here. This is how we get started. Uh, and in the next video, we will get started analyzing this data set.